An ellipse is the shape that we see when we look at a circle from a particular angle. And circles are uh, the cross sections of cylinders. So when we have to draw a cylinder seen from a particular perspective, we have to face up to the challenge of drawing ellipses that look healthy. Off to the left, you see a drawing or an attempt at drawing a cylinder. The top part of that, uh, the top face of that cylinder looks pretty decent and uh, a fairly healthy looking ellipse, but the bottom part doesn't look so good. Now why is that? It's a common error. It's because people intellectually understand that if you sit a cylinder on a table, that table has a flat horizontal surface, and so the bottom of that cylinder is sitting flat, and therefore the bottom of that cylinder should look flattish. But if you look at the arc that was used to draw that, or at least a part of the ellipse, it crashes into the edges of the cylinder. And it's also not curved enough to properly represent what an ellipse would look like at the bottom of that cylinder. If I were to complete this drawing as if I had x-ray vision, essentially mirroring that arc, okay, you see how the arc essentially comes to a point and then suddenly changes direction as opposed to gradually curving around as it should do being part of an ellipse. So that's one problem. The other problem has to do with the relationship between the height of the ellipse and the width of the ellipse. Uh, there's technical terms that apply to this. This dimension of the ellipse is called the minor axis. And this dimension of that ellipse is called the major axis. So if you look at the relationship between the minor and the major axis. And you have to remember that the bottom of the cylinder is lower down. So if the top part of that cylinder looks like this, slightly below your eye level, and the bottom part is even lower, you're going to see essentially the same width or the same major axis. But the minor axis is going to become greater the lower down that ellipse is. So this should be drawn with a greater minor axis. So let's, let's see what we can do. The first thing we'll do is draw a center line, which represents the major axis. And then looking at this, we're going to draw a line properly through the center of this. And it's going to help us understand the full width of that ellipse. So, Looking at this, we see that the minor axis goes a certain degree above and below that. And therefore here, because it's lower down, it has to go even more. Okay? So I've marked down a greater minor axis down here. Okay? Extending above and below that central line. So let's draw that. It's kind of good to flow when you're drawing these cylinders, to flow in your gesture and to try to get it to look right. So if I take out that first uh, not particularly successful attempt at drawing the arc of the bottom of that cylinder, this looks a lot more believable. Uh, the minor axis is a little bit greater than the minor axis here. And if I dot this line, because it, after all it's it's being seen as if we had x-ray vision. We wouldn't actually see this if this cylinder was opaque. This is looking a little bit more healthy. So now let's transport this appreciation into a technique for drawing cylinders known as the boxing technique. Now this presupposes a certain prior understanding of two-point perspective. But even if you don't know anything about two-point perspective, you're probably still going to get the general idea. So the boxing technique essentially asks the question, what simpler geometric form can you fit a more complex form inside of in order to be able to draw it properly? So what I want to do is I want to draw a cylindrical form inside this box shape. I've created two vanishing points 
and I've extended some lines that are drawn freehand, so nothing's perfect here. But these, uh, the, this, these lines form part of a perspective grid that helped me to draw this box shape. And I know that if I draw a square, and I find the centers of that square just by visually guessing where they are, I know that a circle fits snugly inside of a square like this. So here I've got a box shape but it's drawn in perspective but I know that if I can find the centers of each side of the top face of that box it will help me to draw this circle seen in perspective in a properly drawn ellipse. So let's take a look then. I've already got some construction lines laid out there but we know that if you draw two diagonal lines through the co opposite corners of a square, you will get the center of that square. And that center should line up perfectly with the centers of the sides of that square. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to draw a diagonal line from one opposite corner to the other and another diagonal line and then I will draw that the vertical line and the horizontal line as seen on this but here they're going to be directed towards their respective vanishing points And in so doing, I'm able now to find the centers of the sides of each of the, uh, of the uh, top face of that box. Now, this is an uh, important exercise to go through to do this diagram when you're drawing a box in perspective like that because here it's a no-brainer that the center of this side is in between this corner and this corner but when you when you take a side of a square like that and you throw it into perspective the closest half of that side is going to appear to be bigger to you so it's in creating that diagram in a perspective drawing that you're able to properly locate the centers of each of these sides of the top face of that box. So now that I've located those sides, I'm going to draw the circle as seen in perspective and it'll look like an ellipse. So let's take a crack at it. In doing this kind of drawing, you have to go about it with a certain sense of flow because it's easy to create sharp corners when you're uh, trying to navigate around from one point to the other uh, and you have to try to avoid that by imagining that you're a uh, flying object uh, and your mission is to just gently touch these points and proceed to the other point without bouncing off them or ricocheting in any way. So, uh, this box shape has helped me to draw the top part of that cylinder and we're going to do the same thing for the bottom part so I'm going to locate the centers of the bottom face of this box shape by drawing that helpful uh, set of diagonal lines and then eyeballing the appropriate angle for these crosshairs because they have to work in terms of perspective relative to the size of the box and so I have found the centers of that box the bottom face of that box so let's take another go at drawing an ellipse this is fun takes a little bit of practice but eventually becomes second nature and so 
if you go around a few times and you try to get a good flow going and the drawing of this shape with maybe a few corrections and no strange bulges, uh, you'll get a fairly healthy looking ellipse. Do a few corrections here so it looks right. Our mission is to do this freehand and then we're going to connect the top part of the of the uh, cylinder with the bottom part of the cylinder. And we can make, here we'll make a few adjustments and we can make the uh, back edge of that cylinder into a dotted line because after all it's it's not visible to us if that's an opaque object and this is looking fairly decent it's not perfect but it's looking like a pretty healthy cylinder with uh, two ellipses drawn of course uh, the minor axis of that uh, of that ellipse which is the top face of the cylinder is less than the minor axis of the bottom uh, face of that cylinder because of the fact that a circle seen in perspective will appear to be uh, a, a very narrow ellipse if it's close to eye level but the, uh, if that circle drops down you'll see a greater minor axis and so we can now take this appreciation for drawing ellipses in perspective and look at another challenge which is a taller cylinder it's narrower and it's taller and I've already drawn a box around it so these uh, the top and bottom of that box will help me to draw this better and uh, and we're just going to uh, try the same thing but we're going to also pretend that we're slicing up this tube at various levels uh, like a length of bologna and it'll allow us to produce a number of ellipses that vary in the dimension of their minor axis and it will help us to appreciate how important it is to take into account how high or low uh, a, a circular cross-section of a cylinder is from our perspective and how to do justice to that in, in how narrow or broad the ellipse is that we draw. So let's take a look. I'll use a new piece of chalk.